Imagine the skies above the Middle East turning into a battlefield, but instead of the roar of fighter jets, it's the hum of drones that strikes terror into everyone below. That's actually becoming a reality as Hamas utilizes Iranian drones in and around Palestine, Israel, and the Gaza Strip. This is becoming more and more of a threat. And throughout this video, we're going to dive into the specific drones and what can be done to counter this threat and keep Hamas and Iran from dominating the skies with this ominous hum of the drones that are coming right from the factories of Iran. Here we go. These UAVs are reshaping the dynamics of the Israeli-Hamas confrontation. They fly not just with wings, but with a mission to alter the status quo. As they glide through the skies, these drones can carry more than weapons. They carry the weight of a new age warfare tactic, symbolizing a significant shift in power and strategy. And in a region where every development can tip the scales, the rise of Palestinian UAVs marks a critical juncture, and it opens a new chapter in a long and complex saga. Unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, or RPAs, remotely piloted aircraft, have flown from the screen of science fiction movies into reality. Now, this is becoming one of the greatest threats in aerial warfare. And on a personal note, when I was flying fighter jets, a lot of the time we were thinking, what would be the case if we encountered a swarm of drones or drones that might be trying to attack us or ground troops as we flew combat missions to try to protect them. This was something of major concern and it's only become stronger since my time of flying in combat. These UAVs transcending the need for human pilots offer more than just the absence of someone inside who can't pull more than 9 Gs. They offer the ability for these drones to literally change direction at a moment's notice and create a dogfight problem that has never been seen before with human-bound aircraft. They also pose the threat of being able to attack ground forces while potentially remaining completely unobservable from certain aircraft. Harnessing the power of aerodynamics, these drones defy gravity and conventional limitations. They can achieve speeds of over 285 miles per hour. Their agility and speed may not rival fighter jets yet, but they excel in precision and timeliness, delivering the critical payloads to precise locations, unbound by the human constraints of pulling 9Gs. In the complex tapestry of the Middle East, Hamas's forces have been integrating UAVs into their arsenal. Many are reportedly, surprise, surprise, developed by Iran. And these drones are not mere tools of surveillance. They're actually capable of having weapons strapped onto them and doing strategic armed reconnaissance, which gives them the ability to reach out and strike targets with kinetic effects. Say hello to the Shayed 149 Gaza. It's a prodigy of Iranian drone engineering and it stands as a symbol of advanced aerial technology. In the volatile landscape of the Middle East, this drone is becoming a workhorse. It's operated by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and its proxies, aka Hamas and Hezbollah. And it's named after the embattled Gaza Strip. It represents not just technological prowess, but also Iran's strategic influence in the region. It was introduced in 2022 and the the Shahed 149 Gaza is a testament to Iran's growing competence in indigenous UAV development. Have you guys heard of the game War Thunder? They're the sponsor of today's video and they're the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. And you can play it for free right now on your favorite console or your PC. Just click the link in the description and you're going to get a massive bonus pack when you do that. The thing I really enjoy is flying the biplanes in War Thunder. You can just turn those things on a dime and they have machine guns attached to them. So who wouldn't enjoy that? But there's over 2,500 aircraft and vehicles that you can take command of ranging from those biplanes to modern day fighter jets, armored cars of the 1920s, all the way to main Line modern battle tanks. And having flown fighter jets myself, we would use software to determine what kind of damage was needed to disable a tank. And the fact that War Thunder has intertwined this same idea and concept with their own damage model that you can't find in any other game directly into War Thunder, it just makes it so much more realistic. You can play War Thunder for free right now just by clicking the link in this description. You can play it on your PC, your Xbox, and your PlayStation, all of the above. And remember, when you're up there, if you see Max Afterburner, I'll be in that biplane saddling up behind you, getting ready to try to shoot you down. But I'm sure 
you're gonna have a trick up your sleeve as well. <laughs> if you act now, you can get access to that bonus material if you haven't played before or if it's been more than six months since you played. Click the link now because that's not gonna last forever. You'll be able to get access to all that and I'll see you up there in the skies above War Thunder. At the heart of the Shayed Gaza are very capable engines. It's a 750 horsepower Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6 engine. It's a powerhouse that propels it to impressive speeds of up to 220 miles per hour. The speed not only underscores its operational efficiency, but also its potential to execute swift tactical maneuvers in conflict zones while operating under combat scenarios. It also has an astounding range and endurance. It can fly approximately 4,300 miles and remain airborne for times of over 35 hours. It's also got an advanced armament system. Perhaps the most intriguing aspect of it is the sophistication of this system and how it's able to carry so many weapons. It can carry up to 13 small diameter bombs and it's also outfitted with over 500 pounds of electronic equipment used for surveillance. The geopolitical considerations of having Palestine's army, potentially Hamas and Hezbollah, having this drone is vast. It's not just a matter of military aid that Iran is giving to Hamas, but they're trying to tip the scales against Israel in a way with sophisticated, direct strategic firepower that this drone offers. Moving on to the next drone, the Hesa Shahed-136, another very capable, indigenously made Iranian drone. And this drone is made more for versatility and endurance. It has a cruising speed of roughly 100 180 miles per hour and it can travel around 2,000 miles. This makes it suitable for long range reconnaissance or missions that call for a lot of loitering time over top of a target. The Shahed 136's design is indicative of Iran's focus on functional efficiency. The drone, while operational in its current form, appears to have the potential for further enhancements and modifications. This ability could make it a more formidable tool, particularly if customized to suit specific operational needs or environments. So for proxy armies like Hezbollah and Hamas, this is like a Lego set that they can strap other equipment onto and use it to adapt to the current battlefield in Gaza. So my take is that the Hesa Shahed 136 is more than just a reconnaissance drone. It's got the ability to be very versatile and it's budget friendly so it can be produced in vast numbers. And then this drone can go out and perform strategic reconnaissance and possibly strategic armed reconnaissance. It's definitely more on the strategic reconnaissance side than being a workhorse that can carry a large payload. But at the end of the day, when weapons get smaller, as more of these precision guided weapons become focused on small diameter bomb type sizes, you've got the ability to possibly put weapons on this thing as well. So while Hamas does have access to drones like this due to their connection with Iran, they're also operating much smaller, more handheld or battlefield portable drones that are being used in the current conflict in the Middle East. The strategic implications of drone use by Hamas cannot be understated. The adoption of their UAV technology has indicated a new dimension in the Israeli-Palestine-Hamas conflict. Drones provide Hamas with enhanced surveillance capabilities and potentially new avenues for carrying out attacks or infiltration missions. This development poses challenges for Israeli defense strategies as it complicates the detection and interception of threats. And on a personal note, while flying combat missions in Afghanistan, I was targeted on aircraft, potentially drones and fighter jets operating out of Iran. I was on an interception mission going up against whatever it was that was trying to come in and test the airspace along the border of Iran. Needless to say, whatever it was, when they noticed that we were a two ship of F-15Es loaded to the teeth, they turned around at pretty much the exact moment. But having targeted Iranian drones and fighter jets, it's clear to me that this is a threat that is not going away. This is something that Iran is creating and building indigenously. So they're gonna to continue to build upon the technology and potentially add new and more sophisticated weapons to the drones that are gonna be in the hands of Hamas 
Hezbollah, proxy armies in Yemen and all over the globe. So as a fighter pilot or any operator of any aircraft that has the ability to shoot these things down, it's going to be incumbent upon fighter pilots moving forward, having the knowledge of what these are going to look like on our radar scopes, what these are going to look like as they come in and try to target ground forces. And knowing the size and the ability of your aircraft to target these is undoubtedly something that any army that's countering the Iranian threat is going to be focused on. So navigating the different conflicts in the Middle East and how drones will intertwine into those is the same thing as walking through a minefield with a blindfold on. You really have no idea what's going to happen. So the best case scenario is to be equipped and ready for the different threats that Iran might use. This can include aerial drones. It can also include drones operating underneath and on the water's surface. So this is also a tip of the hat to drone technology and the fact that drones aren't going anywhere. I mean, on another personal note, members of the Air Force about a decade ago fought the idea that drones would become a central part of the battlefield. And it's clear to me these robots in the sky are here to stay. So instead of fighting against that, I like the idea that the Air Force has embraced the fact that drones, RPAs, UAVs, they're here to stay. So we gotta learn how to operate them well and be extremely precise when operating them offensively and then able to defend against them as well. So as we peer into this unfolding scenario, we can't help but simultaneously be fascinated and scared to death. Because in this theater of remote warfare, the lines blur between the attacker and the defender, and the innocent bystander for that matter. It's like watching a suspense thriller where every character is the hero and also simultaneously the villain. It just literally keeps everybody on the edge of their seats, knowing that these drones can be operating behind behind the scenes that can be operating with stealth technology and going at speeds that we've just never seen before in aerial warfare. Oh, and one more shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. You can play War Thunder for free right now on your PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. Click the link in the description. You'll get access to play for free. And if you haven't played in a while, if it's been more than six months or you're a new time player, you're gonna get access to some of the coolest bonus content ever. Remember, you can be up there flying a biplane, a modern day fighter jet, armored cars from the 1920s, modern battle tanks. This just sounds cooler and cooler every time I say it. I'm literally more excited about War Thunder than I am about regrowing this mustache. So it's interesting to think that sometimes the biggest threats don't come from the loudest cannons or the biggest explosion. They might actually come from that almost silent hum in the sky that's become the ever watching eye when it comes to aerial warfare. Thanks for watching this video, guys. The best compliment you can give me is just click on another video that'll pop up over here. So I don't even know why I'm saying goodbye because I'm going to see you on one of these videos. That'd be the biggest compliment. I really appreciate it. Head over to maxafterburner.co if you want to grab some threads. I've got some new designs popping up over there. Thanks so much for watching. See you on one of these videos. Good day. Good evening. Goodbye. All the other goodbye greetings.